Welcome to this week's edition of World Crisis Radio. This is Webster Tarpley reporting to you from Washington, D.C. It's the afternoon of the 16th of October, 2015. And I'll be making some announcements later in the show about uh, some uh, talks I'm going to be giving in Europe between the 26th of October and the 1st of November, and I'll be having more information about uh, meetings that I hope to be able to organize, just informal gatherings, right, cafe clutch, uh, for people who are uh, interested in the Tax Wall Street Party, my work, uh, being part of an international movement. And that will be in Rome on the 26th of October, Rome, Italy, of course, and then the Frankfurt area, specifically Friedberg, Friedberg near Bad Nauheim, within the range of the Frankfurter S-Bahn, the uh, public transportation. So uh, get ready for that one and uh, and plan to attend, plan to come out and um, be happy to meet you. And uh, I can autograph books. I won't be carrying too many, but if you've got one already, please, uh, please go ahead. Now, of, of this uh, more as we go on. However, we now have an extremely dangerous situation here in Washington, D.C., and the way I would sum this up is that Obama is losing control of the government, or better yet, the outright insane war party is gaining control, seizing control over the government in a kind of a coup, a putsch, a policy putsch. Now, we've been fighting this all summer, as you know. We launched an action to secure the ouster of the ISIS czar, General John Allen, who was the inside man for the Petraeus uh, neocon disgruntled generals faction uh, and was sabotaging everything in regard to Syria. That gave us uh, a couple of weeks of surcease. Now the problem is, ever since the Russian presence in Syria became evident and went into action, uh, attacking the terrorist rebels, that would be September 30th to October 1st, approximately, a little bit more than two weeks. We've got this uh, hysterical Pavlovian reaction by the neocons, by the humanitarian bombers, and other elements in the bureaucracy. It is the case, therefore, that Obama is losing control of the government. Now, of course, uh, I've had more than one idiot savant write to me saying, oh, Obama never controlled the government. He's just a uh, he's just a leftist and all this other stuff. This is absolute nonsense. Uh, we're not talking about control of everything. We're not talking about you know a command economy approach to the federal institutions. It's just can you have some influence on the strategic decisions. And above all, can you, do you still have a veto against possible war? And that is the question. Now, the thing that points uh, most to this is, uh, as a symptom, the fact that Obama has extended the mission of 5,500 U.S. troops in Afghanistan and is now going to keep them there into 2017 or perhaps through 2017, this is an extremely ominous sign. This shows that the neocon fascist madmen, neocon fascist warmongers in particular, and their humanitarian bomber allies have now got the upper hand. Okay? Washington Post this morning, militant gains prompt president to shift course. If you listened to the National Public Radio, International Hour, and Domestic Hour this morning, the Diane Rehm Show. You will have heard uh, not just David Ignatius, Washington Post, uh, speaking tube for the intelligence community, but also others saying Obama didn't want to do this. This was painful for him. It was humiliating. He doesn't uh, like this idea. Uh, and... Obama, therefore, forced to go out there and say Afghan forces are still not as strong as they need to be. Uh, and therefore, while the Taliban have made gains, uh, they can still 
launched deadly attacks in cities, including Kabul. This is Ashton Carter. This is the Petraeus clique. Ashton Carter, there, the cat who ate the canary, he triumphs. He uh, he got his uh, his way. He's a warmonger. So this is the the Afghan side of it. It is extremely ominous. It's ominous. It's bad in itself, and it's a very bad sign for the dynamics of the way things are going. Obama could have said, "Let the Chinese defend their own and their own investments, right? Let 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 an international peacekeeping force be put in there, or some other thing, right? There would have been ways, but no, not with Ashton Carter. And then we have the case of Kerry. This is. Uh, equally or more uh, disturbing when we get right down to it. Uh, we have this character also on national public radio, national Pentagon radio, I guess. Uh, Steve Inskeep, I-N-S-K-E-E-P. And I retweeted this. You can see it on the Webster G. Tarpley Twitter uh, parade. So Steve Inskeep writes that when Kerry was asked a question at, uh, I think it's the University of Indiana. Anyway, it's some educational institution. The uh, question was, do, uh, do you believe, Mr. Secretary Skull and Bones Kerry, do you believe that the United States should send ground forces into Syria at this time? And here's the answer in quotes from the Steve Inskeep of National Public Radio. Quote, will we need to put enablers on the ground? Question mark. I think so. I think so. Period. The president hasn't made the decision yet. Fire him. He's out of here. Fire him. Get him out. This is uh, not what pertains to him. That decision, the president must keep in his own hands and not delegate it to meddlers and careerists and uh, male models, whatever, this character, right? The, uh, the old face man from, from Yale and Skull and Bones. And I'm repeating it now. This is shocking. Quote, will we need to put enablers on the ground? Question mark. I think so. The president hasn't made the decision yet. So that's the version from Steve Inskeep. Now, in the in the uh, Diane Reem show this morning, National Pentagon Radio, we had the following uh, version of the same thing, which came from this David Ignatius. His version was that Kerry had been asked more or less the same thing: Do we need to send troops? Does the United States should the United States send troops? ground troops to Syria. And uh, Kerry's answer, according to Ign Ignatius, was not yet, not yet. So we are on the slippery slope. Now, this stuff about enablers, <laughs> an enabler, is that the new term for ground troops? Is that the new term for a brigade, a battalion, a, ba a battalion of enablers, a division of enablers? Uh, this is uh, obviously getting very, very... Orwellian. So Obama has now got two top cabinet members, uh, and that would be Kerry at State and Ashton Carter at the Pentagon, who are now reverting uh, to their outright warmonger ways. Ashton Carter also says some stuff about got a lot of work ahead of us in Afghanistan, but we better not have a lot of work for ourselves in Afghanistan. And we'll be back in a minute. Welcome back to World Crisis Radio. Maybe the best way to summarize the situation in Washington is that the war party, the unprincipled satanic alliance of neocon, fascist, madmen, and warmongers, on the one hand, and the humanitarian bomber uh, hypocrites and double standards people. They're joining together to push Obama towards military action, which any fool can see that he doesn't want to take. And I have nothing but scorn for the idiots who continue to attack Obama 
for God's sake, attack the warmongers that are forcing these decisions through. We did it with Allen, with limited resources. We catalyzed enough to get him out. At least we think uh, he's uh, he's not quite out yet, but it looks like this is going to be the end of his tenure. But now we've got Ashton Carter and we've got Skull and Bones Kerry reverting to true Skull and Bones form. So this is, this is intolerable. We've got the Afghan decision. They're going to stay through or into 2017. Five, six thousand U.S. forces. Very bad symbol. The triumph of Ashton Carter. He now says we got a lot of work to do there. And then once again, quote, will we need to put enablers on the ground? Question mark. I think so. The president hasn't made that decision yet. And that is by Inskeep. Uh, he says that is Secretary of State John Kerry answering a student's question about whether there's a need for U.S. boots on the ground in Syria. It means war. And this is relegated to a side remark on one program. This is, uh, this is absolute uh, insanity, right? This is the world gone mad. Now, the other one is the Turkish government says they shot down an aircraft today along their southern border with Syria. And of course, what was it? Was it a drone? And if so, what country? We've got all the neocon fascist madmen, all their relay stations are now uh, sending out the signal, it was Russia, it was Russia, time for confrontation. Dear friends out there, this is looking like a very ugly and very dangerous situation. Problem is, we don't have any serious mass organizations who would be able to speak against this. It's now left into the hands of you, the people who have the most to lose. Look at your wife, look at your children, look at your home, look at yourself in the mirror, think about the future, think of the country. You got to do something about this. Uh, a certain amount of... Uh, time spent on social media this weekend might be one of the best investments you've ever made. And it might be a good idea uh, to do that. It might be um, a very uh, useful uh, kind of, um, I wouldn't even say insurance policy, but some contribution to your own um, future welfare. They're all saying uh, with, uh, with David Ignatius, Obama was pained he didn't want to do it. Uh, so therefore, it's going to be a longer uh, stay. Another, another thing from Ignatius, which I thought is interesting, he's got an article in the Washington Post, so far only on the website. I guess it'll be on in the printed paper tomorrow. That is the, 16th of, uh, the 17th of October. Sorry. Um, what Ignatius writes is that the reason that the $500 million program, now abandoned, thank God, was not successful was because the U.S. had very poor intelligence about the Nusra front, Jabhat al-Nusra, the Al-Qaeda affiliate. I wonder what these 9-11 families are thinking, saying, doing. Wouldn't they like to have a demonstration that this is pure insanity based on what they've been told? Anyway, here's the, the point from uh, Ignatius. The United States had poor intelligence about Jabhat al-Nusra, the al-Qaeda affiliate that is a dominant force in the north. The moderate rebels walked into a trap in late, late July because they didn't expect to be attacked by Nusra fighters. That should have been anticipated. So look, these are the people who wanted to have a war over the Ghouta chemical weapons fake provocation. Plenty of uh, voices, including David Ignatius, right? Bam Assad, Bam Assad, based on lousy intelligence. And now they, they have the gall to come forward with this. Why, why are you still writing a column? Why don't you resign if that's the best you can do? Now, of course, in terms of who attacked these fighters, or probably Nusra attacked them, but there were two stories. One is that the Turkish forces leaked out when they would be coming so the Nusra people could just mow them down and or the U.S. forces leaked when they would be coming because they didn't trust them and wanted to get rid of them or some other uh, reason. So as a result of this week's decisions, the United States will keep garrisons in Bagram, in Kandahar, in Jalalabad. 
Uh, this is now open.